Hello, today, October the 18th, is World Menopause Day and we are marking it with menopause, the change is here. It's been long overdue, but now with more of us than ever speaking out and supporting people affected by it, change is most certainly here. My symptoms are lack of sleep or waking up in the middle of the night about half past two and then can't get back to sleep and then worry about the fact I'm still awake. Brain fog, I literally just forget things all the time. I suffered from frequent hot flushes. I had them about every 30 minutes and they made me bright red and sweaty and I was very self-conscious at work. Women are finally speaking out about the sometimes life-changing effects of the menopause often happening at a time when they're feeling confident and flying high in their careers, then suddenly they don't recognise themselves. I went through um, a three-year period where I was extremely stressed every day, which is not like me at all. Um, you know, I was waking up with my chest was tight and I didn't connect it to the menopause whatsoever. The menopause marks the end of the reproductive cycle, resulting in a drop in the hormone oestrogen, amongst others, causing many different symptoms, not all of them immediately recognisable. Hot flushes and nightwears are the commonest symptoms, so they, about 75% or so of women experience them. Mm. But a significant proportion of women experience other symptoms, such as sleep disturbances, dis uh, insomnia, changes in mood, low mood, anxiety, irritability. All of these are symptoms of oestrogen deficiency. The average age of the menopause is 51, but the range could be anything between 45 to 55. But when we say that is the range of the menopause, 5% of women can go into the menopause between 40 and 45, 1% mm. before the age of 40. So if the symptoms are ongoing and you have concerns, we would say it is relevant that, that one would go and seek advice. Getting that advice is easier said than done, with women sometimes waiting up to a year before diagnosis from their GP while struggling to perform at work with 63% of them negatively affected in the workplace and one in four actually considering leaving. HSBC Bank, a leader in the world of finance, is now leading the way with initiatives to keep women in the workplace, with simple measures such as providing fans and comfortable fabrics for uniforms. Menopause should not be uh, a lonely um, journey for individuals. It shouldn't be something that, that they worry about. It's just something that they transition through in life and know that support is there for them. HSBC's policies of inclusion and diversity helped Jackie Lloyd stay in her job when she suffered severe menopausal symptoms. I did genuinely consider um, packing it in and, you know, and having a, a break from work because it did become intolerable. The bank is now the UK's first employer to be accredited as menopause friendly. I absolutely believe my managers understand the menopause much more widely now. I feel far more comfortable speaking about it in the workplace um, to my manager if I'm not feeling right. And it has become a subject that is not as taboo at HSBC. Breaking the taboo around menopause is what motivates Henpit, Menopause in the Workplace an organisation who helped HSBC and other companies to gain accreditation for being menopause friendly. It's about creating an environment where it's comfortable to talk about menopause, whoever you are. And for an individual that's experiencing symptoms to ask for support and get it. Um, so whether that's small workplace adjustments or um, if there's something about the facilities, the temperature, for example, that's getting in the way at work. And actually, so many employers now are looking at their uniforms. So I know HSBC UK, who were the first employer to be accredited in the UK, um, they actually implemented menopause-friendly workwear with breathable fabric and a more comfortable fit. So the creativity that's coming out of these organisations is absolutely amazing. That creativity has produced dedicated menopause champions at companies like DFS. Being a menopause champion is really about providing support at the right level to whoever might need it. And I think when you understand some of the statistics about people, women who would rather leave an employer than actually stay when they're going through these really challenging times, it's really important that we start to talk about it. Senior managers are working hard to ensure that everyone, including men who want to support their female colleagues, can access help, whether that's online or in person. 
What we found is that a lot of colleagues in our manufacturing sites, for example, aren't in a position to easily get the access to some of the digital support we have, such as the Pepe Health app. So what we're doing is we're working with partners such as My Menopause Centre to make sure that the support we have in place is accessible face-to-face, -face, so clinician-led face-to-face sessions for women that are impacted by the Menopause Centre in their workplace. Where online support is the best option, the Pepe app has been created to support employers who want to provide expert advice and information to those who need it. Without Pepe, I would not have had the confidence to go into work and say, by the way, I'm menopausal, you're going to have to work with me sometimes. Hi, Jules, Cathy here from Pepe, Director of Menopause Services. I'm here to answer your questions and to help you through the menopause and the questions that you've got about it. Do you want to start by just telling me what it is that's troubling you and why you're here? So when an employer signs up with Pepe, their employees have direct access to somebody like me, a personal menopause nurse that they can ask any question they want about their own personal menopause. Maybe that's about symptoms, maybe it's about treatment options, maybe it's about dealing with managers and support at work. Of all the people going through menopause, 75% say they have some sort of symptoms. Of those, 25% say their symptoms are moderate to severe but only 10% get some sort of medical support. Using an online resource like Pepe allows employers to display their duty of care credentials while providing that support. In our organisation, we have over 3,000 women of menopausal age between 45 and 55. So that's an awful lot of our colleagues who are going through menopause symptoms every day, some of them severe. Um, and so there's many advantages to us as a, an employer, not just for their well-being, because we care deeply about the well-being of our colleagues, but also from the point of view of increased engagement in the workplace, job satisfaction, you know, reduced absence, uh, reduced attrition, uh, and really just attracting new colleagues as well. I think it says a lot about your brand as an employer if you are supporting you know uh, menopause in the workplace. Financial services are an area that menopausal people can find difficult to navigate once symptoms start to make an impact. Standard Chartered Bank is looking at this issue. The action planning that we are doing in Standard Chartered is broadly in two buckets. Uh, the first bucket is leveraging inclusive policies, uh, so providing flexible working uh, to our colleagues, providing workplace adjustments uh, uh, to women who are uh, suffering from the menopause, infrastructural support, so things like sanitary products, you know, spare uniforms for the front line, etc. So, so those are what I call inclusive policies that we have uh, to support our colleagues. The second category is much more around education and awareness. So we have developed detailed guidance for our people leaders on how can they support their teams. We have got our employee assistance program specifically focused on menopause and to provide support to women who are going through the menopause. We are also looking for additional training on the topic through our online learning channel. We call it Discover. So uh, those are the two sort of broad buckets and a series of interventions across both of them to support our colleagues. There's also a need for more openness so that the menopause is not a taboo subject. I very strongly believe uh, that the more we are able to normalize some of these conversations inside the organization and create a culture that's focused on inclusion. Um, and uh, uh, menopause for us is part of an overall well-being issue, but it's also an overall inclusion issue. And I fundamentally believe that the more we are able to do that, we can build an environment which is far more inclusive, which makes us more attractive, not just to attract, but retain our diverse talent. Building that environment is already happening at PwC, where the Menopause Matters community gives staff the opportunity to share experiences and learn from each other. I am actually not in the menopause just yet, but there's so much that I've learned through the experience of other women in the firm and through these conversations and talks that we're having. As a leader, if you're not part of the conversation, then how can you help people? How can you help people at work? So any man has to be part of this conversation. It's really good to know that more support is coming and it's already here. And to have these ladies just even as an online forum, it's great. It's really good. Women aged 40 plus are the fastest growing demographic in the workforce. So employers are realising that addressing menopause needs will help to retain this pool of talent.
Women are also asking for certain forms of support, be that for um, fans, if they are you know, experiencing um, high temperatures, um, or just a more flexible way of working. And our approach to working at PwC, we call it empowered flexibility, which gives everyone greater choice over when, where, and how they work, really. But being able to work at home one day where you are experiencing severe symptoms is a huge relief to many of our women. 41% of our partner promotes this year were female. So making sure that they're both the role models and they have the opportunities that are available to them is part of our commercial success as a business. We have a number of male allies who are really interested and they're becoming real advocates and, and supporting our women and educating themselves, I guess, to be able to have better, more supportive conversations and it's been hugely helpful. Having those supportive conversations as part of a big emphasis on mental health awareness encourages an inclusive environment at Asta Group UK. Darren Bailey wanted to learn more about the menopause in order to support his wife. He was already trained in mental health first aid and became a workplace menopause champion after attending training. The whole way through that training course things just kept dawning on me like, I wonder how many relationships break down during this period of time because the guy doesn't know what's going on. So one of the things that I do as a mental health first aid instructor and also teach all of the businesses, sort of like work with different companies and things like that, is I'll always ask managers, you know, so other than the signs that you think might be depression or stress and anxiety, what else might it be? And they'll just go silent and I'll say, have you considered the menopause? Entering the menopause can come as a shock to many women. 1% of women are under 40 when this happens and it affects around 1 in 1,000 under 30. This is referred to as premature ovarian insufficiency, or POI, and can be devastating. Corinna Bordoli is 25 and already postmenopausal. She volunteers for the Daisy Network, a charity supporting early menopause. So when I was around 10, I had all sorts of symptoms. My vocal cords basically developed nodules. My joints started to ache. I was in and out of A&E on crutches all the time. I had migraines, all sorts of insomnia. Things were never put together. I was also very flat. My breasts hadn't developed at all. And obviously I didn't have my period. So finally at the age of 15, the doctor did refer me to a paediatric endocrinologist and that's when I actually got my diagnosis. Some GPs are very specialised in menopause and do understand premature menopause, but others are not so informed and that's where we need to perhaps improve training at university level, at uh, postgraduate level as well, so that everyone has a good understanding of what impact this condition can have and how we can start treating it as early as possible through prompt diagnosis. Corinna has been prescribed HRT, including testosterone, to manage her condition and is still trying to find the right balance. Some women are reluctant to take HRT because of past reports linking it to breast cancer, but for others, the benefits far outweigh the risks. Combined HRT in the form of estrogen and progestogen can result in a small increase in the risk of breast cancer. However, that increase is small and the risk is low, both in medical and statistical terms. But what would be relevant to emphasize is this should not be taken in isolation. So this should be taken in the context of the wider benefits as well as this risk when, when you talk about HRT. In other words, talking about the benefits and quality of life improvement, but also the significant reduction in osteoporosis and osteoporosis related fractures, the significant reduction in cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular mortality. And for that matter, all cause mortality. So what we would advise to look at the British Menopause Society website, at the patient arm of the Society Women's Health Concern, and there are plenty of information there uh, in the form of videos as well as written information to explain what the menopause is, what you can do about it. It's important to remember that not everyone will have a bad experience during the menopause. Medicalizing the condition isn't always necessary. A healthy lifestyle can go a long way to help women make the most of this time. At Essity, whose products focus on making women feel comfortable, this is the message they want to promote. We know when we talk to consumers that this time of life is the time of life where we are most confident and most at ease with our bodies. 
Let's face it, menopause brings about huge changes to anybody's life really. Our role as Tenor and Body Form is very much around helping people to feel well equipped and well informed about things that might change during that period so that they can make the right product choices that will help with the likes of bladder sensitivity and incontinence right through to intimate skin changes. Really it's all about opening up the conversation, make people recognise some of the symptoms and talk about them, whether that's to friends, whether that's to family, to your GP. For me it's a bit like I'm not going to be apologetic about my age. This is how it is. One life, kind of get on with it. Thank you for watching. All reports can be found in full on the British Menopause Society website. The details are on the screen right now. From me and the team here at ITM Productions, thank you for watching. Goodbye.